Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. This is Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo. And in today's video, I'm going to show you, well, hopefully give you some pointers on how to use the X55 joystick and Hoda system with Arena Commander, which was released just about two weeks ago. The whole idea of a Hoda system is to keep your hands only on the two devices. Hands on throttle and stick is what it stands for. So you have a joystick and a throttle with multiple buttons, toggles, hat switches, and knobs, and dials, and all sorts of things. And it needs to be configured. Right now, all we have are the standard maps that come with the Star Citizen Arena Commander, and they are created by the people over there at Cloud Imperium Games. So we're loading up the Arena Commander right now, and for this first piece what we're going to do is we're just going to show you some of the things that are very important to the game so with arena commander being out for just about two weeks we've had a couple of patches the first patch just removed something uh minor right it was very minor with the launcher the second patch fixed errors like the always saying that you're overheating with the 300i and also gave us a new map for the arena commander also in the last two weeks actually yesterday chris roberts came out with this it's his explanation of the flight model and why they've gone painstakingly so in depth with the flight model to make it realistic he wants to fly a real starship that's the way the ships fly in the game and because of that some people are saying that they're acting squirrely that's correct they're going to act more like a boat in water than a plane in the air. There's so much less friction. So when you think about the statement of how long it takes to turn a battleship around, when you're flying in space at whatever speed this system is using and you go to turn it, you need to overcome all the force that's moving you in that direction to move you back in the opposite direction. And those are all being modeled here. And next, we see the two pieces. On the left, the joystick with all of its knobs, buttons, switches, dials. And on the right, you see the throttle with all the toggle switches, knobs, buttons, and also a switch to go between macros, um, not macros, between mappings. The software that came with this is god awful, in my opinion. I'm sure as I learn it, I'll change my mind, as I did with the Hornet, but it's just been very difficult. One thing to note, the key map that points to that toggle on the throttle to the top is incorrect. It's actually the red button that has already gone by. Here are the rest of the key mappings. This is going to be one that's very important because currently it's the only way to turn off G-Save ComSat and to activate decoupled mode, which I do not like because it's not realistic. If you decoupled in space, one of your adversaries is just going to have a sitting duck target and just launch a missile or something at you because even if you launch a flare and you're just sitting there, you're not going to evade a missile. So... I'm not a big fan of decoupled mode. I know why you have to use it. I've used it when I've been dead in the water and couldn't move, and it's actually helped me out, but it's a last ditch effort for me. There's other maps in here too. There's the gamepad, which some people are having a huge amount of success using. Mouse and keyboard, of course, people have a huge amount of success. And then there's two or three different HOTUS um, systems. There is a regular joystick right here. This one is the Logitech Extreme Joystick, Extreme 3D. I've used this. It's good. I like it. It's not my favorite. This is the X52, the predecessor to the X55. At least I think that's what it is. Satek makes some pretty good joysticks. I was always a CH Products fan. Still love their products, but I have moved up to this, the X55. Again, there's the key map. Understand where it's pointing to afterburner is incorrect. Just below that slider is a button, and that button will be your afterburners. You have to type in that really long expression that's to the right over there. Missing from there is C colon forward slash users forward slash whatever your username is forward slash documents forward slash star citizen forward slash. And you get the picture. It's a huge endeavor to try to get through this, but... You do, and you get in, and it is going to activate your joystick. And we will do that right here 
right now as we speak just to show you how to do this. So the first thing that you do is you hit the little tilde key and the tilde key will bring up this. Once it's in, you type in that expression and enjoy and you have your X55 loaded. All right, we are going to cut here and get into the game. Alrighty, the game is loading up at this point and we are in. Something to understand about how to fly this system. Oops, something's wrong here. If you look to the left hand side, you see my paper doll figure and you see the status of all my weapons. If you look in the upper left hand corner, not the upper left hand corner, but one and two are my Mantis Gatling guns, they're showing zero. There is a reason for this. The last time I flew the Hornet, I had put the M4 A's on the um, on the wings and the CF 117s on the turret to try to see what it would be like flying my F7 CM since that's what the standard load is. And now when I come in, they're not there. So let's just try to talk about flying with the X55 for a few seconds. The first thing to understand is. Yes, indeed, we're flying in G-Safe mode and ComStab on right now, but still, we want to use small inputs to try to line up. Why? This guy's trying to move us, or outmaneuver us, I should say, and while he's doing that, his plane, you know, his ship is jerking around, but if we jerk around, you got to remember that the ship tries to go in a single direction for a little bit before the thrusters actually overcome that momentum and move you in the direction you're trying to go in. So what you're trying to do is actually use small inputs on the joystick to try to line up to get things right on target and fire. We're going to launch a missile here because really without those mantises, we are going to be sitting ducks. All right, also, just something to see, the mantises are there. Pretty cool looking, right? You see the how the thrusters are going and how they're moving us in different directions. And you understand there's four on top and four on the bottom. They just don't have the thrust to do the things that we need to. Showing the full range of motion of the turret here. If you have an F7CM with the two seats, the back seater will be able to use the turret and to engage targets anywhere in that 180 degree arc. God, I wish it was a 360 degree arc so you could shoot that damn scythe off my tail when I get one there. Something I'll have to talk to Chris about, making that turret actually flip around the back too. That would make for bombing runs or torpedo runs. Oh, this isn't the ship with the torpedo, is it? That's my gladiator that will be coming in the future. All right, I think we've had enough with this fail of a game. It's going to be tough to keep this one going without the mantises so let's just cut here we are now back at the desktop and we're going to do two things in this piece of the video the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to figure out why the warning in the lower right hand corner is going off saying that i'm running at 80 degrees centigrade but really we're going into our documents directory we're going to go into star citizens directory as soon as i realize that it's right where i keep touching <laughs> and then we're going to go into the citizen client and then we're going to go and delete the user folder. That way, when we boot back up, we are going to be able to have mantises with ammunition. Second thing is we're going to go into the area where they have the HOTUS file. We're going to copy it and move it back out to a subdirectory that's not so deeply nested in the system. So when I have to type the expression, I'm not typing 16,000 characters to activate the joystick. All right, that's done. Let's go in the game. Here we are back in the hangar and we're gonna enter in that new expression which will be PP underscore rebind keys. And then the directory, C colon forward slash HOTUS. That's the one I created, forward slash, layout, underscore, HOTUS, underscore, X55. You do not have to put the XML in there. When you're successful in typing it in and hitting enter, it'll give you the enjoy message and you're all set to go. Here we are basically in the meat and potatoes of this episode. And I'm not sure if I want to go and talk about everything that goes on here or not. 
the reason why you saw those yellow flashes are after you delete the user folder, it has to go and it has to go in there and rebuild all the texture caches. So at times you'll get that, but essentially the whole thing is built here. I'm trying out the new feature of this one, which is the right thumb hat on the top, sorry, the left thumb hat on the top of the X55 joystick lets you see around your cockpit. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm sure it's something that will be fixed in the future. Okay, talking about what's going on here. First round are going to be the Vandal sites that are the scavengers. They are basically the level ones that you fight. They'll be followed by hunters later on and then alphas. You'll also have every three levels a Vandal elite that you fight, the first one being the little king. So what's going on here is lining up the target, making sure that I am firing all four weapons because essentially, like I said in the original F7C review, the lasers are your long range weapon and they will take down shields where the ballistics that are in the mantis will just chew up the metal of a target. So once you take down the shields, you'll be able to just dispatch a target pretty quickly, like we just did. Those mantises are killer, as killer as the Amneski cannons that are on the 300i. Now, why am I so high on the F7C now, when I wasn't in the initial piece of it? Well, if you look to the right of my target pipper, you'll see the Comstab, G, Safe, and coupled decoupled message. That's going from bottom to top, of course. And those are pieces of the flight model that you can use to your benefit. Here in G safe mode, as we bang into this gorgeously rendered damaged, the damage modeling on this is amazing. You guys at CIG did an amazing job. But as you fly around with G safe and Comstab on, the ship will fly as close to a real in-atmosphere fighter as it possibly can. It's not really going to be exactly like that. There'll still be some slipping and sliding, which is why you feel a little bit squirrely in the flight model, but it will be limited. Hold to a minimum, right? When you fight with those off, you are going to slide around kind of like um, kind of like drifting in the Fast and the Furious movies. So you're drifting around instead of pretty much linear held to a single flight path way of moving around in space. With G-Safe off and Comstab off, you are going to be able to kick butt in this fighter better than anything else. And with all the weapons that it has at its disposable, disposer, disposal, the F7CM and F7C are definitely 100% the best fighters in the game, in my opinion, at this point, since it's the only one I've flown. But also, understanding how to make those things work, works for me. Look at the full range of motion on those weapons. They are gimped right now, if you read in Chris Roberts' letter that I showed a little bit ago. The reason that they're gimped is because if the full gimbling was allowed to work on this ship, people that were fighting against you in Aurora's and 300 eyes just would have no shot whatsoever. Okay, so you got an idea of how the ship flies with G-Safe on and Comstab on. Let's go find a piece of this match where I actually fly with it off. Not too far from where I was, I was able to hit the control and caps locks to turn off G-Safe. Now in G-Safe, the ship is not gonna limit the turn, well, the Gs that you receive from turning the ship to a acceptable level. You're actually gonna be able to black out and red out. So now we are flying in a way that we can actually see gray outs, black outs, and red outs. And it's going to start affecting the way that we fly the ship. The best part of it is that we're now going to be able to turn tighter and stay on their tails. So in G safe mode, we are definitely 100% a lot better at flying the fighter. With the X-55 in this mode, you can take a little bit more 
chances and pull back a little bit harder on the joystick because now the ship is actually going to react a little bit better to you. Um, I, I should say a lot better to you. So we're flying with Comstab off now. Comstab is where it tries to fly more like an, a ship in atmosphere. Now as I turn, I'm going to slide and slip a little bit more. This is going to give me the ability to do strafing maneuvers and some other pretty impressive things. Hitting the right button at the top of the joystick just to the side is your countermeasures. We just were able to evade a missile there. We're fighting the little king now. Usually I use a missile to dispatch him, but he launched another one which blew up against our shields. So the right upper button on the side of the joystick is your countermeasures. And on your throttle, there are two toggles, uh, push forward, pull back, that are at the bottom of it. The upper one will let you change between your chaff and your flares. In this version of Arena Commander, there are only infrared missiles, so you just need flares. We are now flying with Com Stab Off and we're flying with G-Safe off. So you can see that we are much more able to stay on target and destroy things. Let's see what else could happen with those two things off. There's something I want you to make, be aware of while you're watching this. Watch the throttle indicator, which is to the right of the speed and boost indicator, okay? So the throttle indicator you'll see is always being moved. Why is that? Well, just like a real life fighter, you're trying to stay on the rear end of somebody and there is a button that says match target speed. A lot of people say that throttle, or I've heard it in different videos, throttle is just useless. Just go balls to the wall, meaning full throttle, and just fly around. That's not a way to do it because there's times where these ships are going to do that maneuver, and if you notice, I pulled all the way back on the throttle in that maneuver to avoid being hit by him. And my thrusters all of a sudden fire forward to slow me down. It's important at times. There's a little bit of a gray out. Coming up in just a few moments after we dispatch this fighter, I believe, we're going to see the negative things that could happen with Comstab and also the G-Safe off. It's actually where you slip and you think, you can see you slipping now. If you actually watch the outside instead of the fighter, you'll see we're not flying linearly. We're more flying like a real ship would. The Gs that you pull are not from the turn themselves. They're from the thrusters actually making your ship fly in the direction your nose is now pointed. So you start pulling those G's after you turn in the Comstab and G-Safe off mode. Well, Comstab, G-Safe seem to be on right now. I don't know what happened there. Okay. This is going to be a situation where you're going to see what could happen when you're flying at full speed and you don't manage your throttle very well. I'm taking this guy down, but if you notice in the lower right hand corner, you see that area right there? We're getting awfully close to the space station. It's not a good formula. I'm being laser focused on him and didn't notice this the first time. So we get him. Now he starts flying the opposite direction. And you notice that we're flying and we turn. And all of a sudden, we are going the wrong direction and we blow up. What happened there? I wasn't aware of where I was. My X-55 was pointed in the wrong direction and I pulled back really hard. The ship then reacts by sliding instead of turning and bangs into the space station. So in those situations where you pull hard on the stick, sometimes it just does not do what it's supposed to do. The ICS, Intelligent Control System, read that as me trying to move my nose on a target and let me slide or strafe instead of point my nose and go in a linear direction or circular centrifugal force, whatever you want to call it, and I crashed. I died. 
These are things that happen when you pull on the joystick too hard instead of using fine movements. I did that because I got scared and not knowing the maps, not knowing or, or being in that situation often is what can cause that. So let's go on to the end of this and see what happens as we go on. This is just a little bit later on. Comstab and G Safe are on, firing on a guy, and he takes out my mantises. Not my mantises, my CF 007s. So I now do not have weapon systems on the top, and I'm flying squirrely. It's very important at this point to really start. You see how over control it gets? Just little maneuvers, because my jets are totally lost, are starting to hurt me. So I have to learn how to move the X-55 again. I'm learning it little by little, trying to keep the pipper just ahead of him to fire. And not really making it here, right? Fine maneuvers, fine maneuvers, fine input on the controls in situations like this. Because pulling, tugging, and jerking around are just going to make you, well, they're going to make you over, you know, overshoot overturn or possibly do what I did just a few moments ago and crash. All right, so we're just launching a bunch of missiles to try to clear this. We now only have the Mantis and a couple of missiles left. I think we have two in our front right quad. I'm just testing the weapons now to make sure. This is level eight. Level 8, you usually have two hunters, maybe three hunters, and three scavengers, maybe two scavengers. I think it's set, but I swear there's been some that had actually had a different mix. So here is a hunter. Hunters are the level 2s. They're a little bit more adept at shooting at long range. And they also are good at evading missiles. But he did not do a good job in that one. All right, here is another hunter. I'm taking lots of hits on my rear end. The only thing I'm hearing about it is right there. Taking different hits on that rear tail. I'm waiting for the tail to disappear. It actually gets blown off here in a couple of seconds. Oh, there's a collision. I think the key here is I had no wingman. Which is why everyone's on my butt. Here we go. We launched a missile at him. All right, we're gonna launch a missile at him. If I got one left, no, I'm empty. Now you notice that the mantis actually has a circle instead of a diamond. The circle, as long as that circle is lit up, it's tracking the target. Okay. The diamond is for. Up oh, there goes the tail. Now we actually have no maneuverability whatsoever. So even better maneuvering of the ship is needed. As long as that green circle is lit, you are going to be sending metal to the target. He's gone. All right. And you'll notice I pulled back in the throttle hard as he was being destroyed, so I didn't crash into him. Here we go. It's tough to get on target. All right, so one thing that the software for the X-55 is good for, you'll notice that I didn't talk about yaw because yaw in space and in real life, if you yaw too hard, you are actually gonna rip your heart away from the AO order. I'm sure that is not going to be modeled in the game, but it is a very bad way to take G side to side. But I do use the yaw at times, which is twisting the joystick in a you know rotating motion right and left, right? So when I first started using the X-55, I'd come out of a out of a pitch or roll maneuver and I jaw hard to the right or hard to the left. The sensitivity of the yaw is very, very, very high in the game. So what I did is I went into the X-55 curve configuration utility and I added a huge dead zone to the yaw access in the game you know in the uh, 
joystick, and that has helped me out immensely. I also curved the input to be slight at first and to be more drastic as you turned further and further. Those are things that you could learn how to do with the software, and if you have any questions, you could send them my way at theaddictedgamer at gmail.com. All right, the rest of my ship is gone. I'm going to hit the lower left toggle switch on my base of my throttle and eject. That is one of the buttons, and hopefully not going into the light here. Don't want my character to die now, right? All right. So there's only a couple more things to talk about. You're getting the gist of how this works. The X55 is an amazing HOTUS device. It's easy to use, believe me. And as long as you control it the way you would a real spacecraft, aircraft, everything is going to be perfect. You can't control the spaceship in a way that's going to bring damage to it. And that means over-controlling it. So just small maneuvers, and you will do great with the stick. So my pointers here are, learn the configuration utility. Maybe you can make your own maps. I don't know. I haven't tried that yet. Add a dead zone. You can do that in the configuration utility, the preferences. And the dead zone is something that needs to be done with the yaw so you don't continuously jerk your ship around when you're flying. Once you start using it, learn the key map. Fly around inside of the free flight for a while. Learn what all the keys do. Learn what the comstab and the G-safe do and how to fly in them. Learn how to push the ship to the limit. And you do this in free flight mode. Once you get into a match to all of your all of your maneuvers all of your finding out at lower levels because generally the vandal sites at those levels the scavengers aren't going to hit you too often when there's only three or four of them in a match and most of them are focused on your wingmen just use all of these things to make using the hodus a much more pleasant experience I haven't tried mouse and keyboard more than once or twice, and I think it works really well. I tried the Xbox controller actually a few times, and I think it's a viable controller. But my favorite right now is the X55, because no other way gives me the feeling of flying a starfighter like flying with the HOTUS. It is amazing, and I think that Satek did an amazing job on it, and learning how to use it shouldn't be more than understanding that flying a starship isn't all going to be Luke trying to shoot the Death Star. Sometimes it's going to be lining up the poor little soul in front of you that you don't even know his name. <laughs> all right, so we're a little bit done with this one, and I think we've gone a little bit too long. So as I bid farewell and my ship is destroyed for the umpteenth time, I hope that you guys all have a wonderful week, and remember, be safe out there. Yeah. <laughs>